करना चाह रहा हूँ तो डॉक्टर मोहम्मद सलाहुद्दीन साहब ने बी फॉर्म और एम फॉर्म की तालीम हासिल करने के बाद पी की डिग्री भी हासिल की है आपने अपनी मुलाजिम का आगाज माइक्रो लैब बैंगलोर में बहसित प्रोडक्ट मैनेजर किया और खूब नाम कमाया फिर आपने मौलिम के पेशे में अपना सफर शुरू किया और 2010 का ताहाल मैसूर की फारूखिया कॉलेज ऑफ फार्मेसी में बहसी प्रोफेसर और प्रिंसिपल की खिदमत अंजाम दे रहे हैं आपने लीबिया में फॉरन असाइनमेंट में भी कुछ अरसा काम अरसा अलमुख्तार यूनिवर्सिटी में भी काम पर है और आपने दो पेटेंट्स रजिस्टर भी करवाए हैं और उनतीस पेपर भी पब्लिश कर चुके हैं आप राजीव गांधी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हेल्थ साइंसेस बेंगलुरु में बहसी चेयरमैन बोर्ड ऑफ स्टडीज और इसके अलावा वहाँ के अकाडमी मेंबर हेलो हेलो सुने आपने दो पेटेंट्स रजिस्टर करवाए हैं और उनतीस पेपर्स पब्लिश कर चुके हैं आप राजीव गांधी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हेल्थ साइंसेस में बहसी चेयरमैन बोर्ड ऑफ स्टडीज और वहाँ के अकाडेमिक मेंबर फैकल्टी मेंबर असिस्टेंट एडिटर की खिदमत के अलावा भी बहुत सारी खिदमत वहाँ अंजाम दे रहे हैं इन पर कोई यूनिवर्सिटी में भी आपकी खिदमत जारी है उसके अलावा आप कर्नाटका स्टेट फार्मेसी कॉलेज के प्रिंसिपल एसोसिएशन की भी सरगर्म सेक्रेटरी भी हैं इसके अलावा दीगर फलाही और दीगर इदारों से भी आप एक फाल शख्सियत हैं तो हमें खुशी इस बात की है कि ऐसी शख्सियत हमारे दरमियान है आज आज पेपिंग अप टीचर्स ई लर्निंग एंड चैलेंजेस को अपना मखला पेश कर रहे हैं वबा की वजह से तालीम इदारों को एक नए ढंग से काम करना होगा बहुत से मौलम को यह मैदान कुछ नया कुछ अनोखा लगा होगा डॉक्टर मोहम्मद सलाहुद्दीन इस मौजू पर सैर हासिल गुफ्तु करेंगे तो आइए हम सब मिलकर इनका खैर नुम करें मैं दरख्वास्त करता हूँ कि वो अपने ख्याल का इजाज़ शुरू करें डॉक्टर सलाहुद्दीन साहब First of all, let me thank to the humble intellectuals uh, uh, for giving me an opportunity to be part of this uh, wonderful uh, evening of uh, Teachers' Day. Uh, let me greet uh, uh, to all the teachers, especially. Uh, it's an honor for me to share the platform along with the uh, eminent personality of our country, uh, Professor Jalis Tarin Sahab. It is always uh, this is the second time. in fact first time i had shared with him during the convocation of the upper farukhia dental college and this is the one first of its kind on uh, a virtual platform i am sharing i'm sure uh, my words might be small in front of him because he is a sea of knowledge sea of experience but still with whatever the knowledge i have i will try to share it uh, through the powerpoints definitely i would like to give an insight to the education the problems we faced and uh, the challenges that we are going to uh, have it these uh, uh, with this uh, i would like to just share my powerpoints uh, is my slide visible yes yeah yeah, yeah. okay so uh, let me uh, just go across uh, to my topic i'll be sharing today my experience prepping up teachers e-learning and its challenges as you all know that uh, e-learning and challenges was not at all a part of the academic curriculum though it was there in the reputed institutions reputed universities but we never thought ek aam school mein ek aam college mein jo hai na e-learning ya jo hai na virtual learning was not part of it so before i go to my talk let me just inform to all the attendees that the opinions expressed in this presentation is solely of my personal and not from any organization and i am not associated to it some of the images and videos used are from public domain in fact it has been used to make the concept simple and understanding to you all in my today's topic where i will be taking more than half an hour i request each and every one to stay connected with this and uh, be part of it definitely you will get an insight to it i'll be discussing on the technology evolution to which how it has come e learning that is where the platforms are going to use social media to which about our professor janish sahab was also telling and in fact he is using it and the future challenges how it is going to be 
and if you see it uh, particularly with respect to the uh, revolution in evolution of technology i'll be taking only in brief about how from 2015 to 2020 the evolution in technology has taken place if i if i say that from 2015 it was called as the techno era where we were talking about self driving cars microchip prosthetic body parts drones power banks that has come into it and 2016 it is called as the emerging tech era where amazon drones have started we started using the larger uh, usb cards we started using the playstations overboard speaker that talks and then we had the color food tech era where we started using the 360 degree selfie face recognition devices apple iphone interactive touch screen projectors and then 2018 we had the smart era like smart watch wireless earbuds 3d metal printing artificial intelligence and then we had the 2019 as the virtual era i say this is where we started getting into the virtuality into the e learning wherein a person sitting at one place and imagining to be at the other place were in like 5g data extended reality virtual reality mixed reality augmented reality this is how now we have started in 2020 all these evolutions has made in this lockdown period to start use thinking about the technology how it can be used so let me go into brief about how prepping of teachers can be taken up see if i see this lockdown period right from 24th of the march where transitional steps has taken place immediately the government when it you know brought into the lockdown there was a what we had before that we had the traditional method of teaching and then when the government has announced 24th march as the lockdown that starts and colleges were asked to close all exams have been postponed there was a sudden stop in the activity teachers as we all know that today we are thinking about teachers today we are celebrating the teachers day these teachers they immediately ask to teach from home whether they are aware of the technology or not they were asked to go ahead to look into the teaching of online process teachers were under fixed they were not knowing it what to do because many still i see the teachers do not have the smartphones teachers do not have the interconnectivity but still they were asked go for online teaching the government has extended the lockdown one two three and this has made a lot of breakdown in the activities a confusion a heap of the stoppage of activities and government advises to most of the universities to go for online and other mode of examinations promote students without examination to the higher classes there was a chaos among the students what to be done there was a confusion among the teach parents how they can send to their parents to the schools and in this time we have to look into two things which are going to make a progression one is the tech teacher use of e teaching methods any teacher who is adapting to it is very much important during this lockdown period and in tech institution the institutions that has already adopted to the online or e learning uh, e learning methods you know in their curriculum activities in a routine way so if you see that during this lockdown period it is all because of the ignorance of the institutions i would like to say what the institutions were just waiting to watch though they were not well versed with the technologies having their own platforms having their own softwares many of them were lying on the free softwares like how long this lockdown continues this is this was the ignorance they didn't got into the action that okay lockdown has occurred we should immediately go for online teaching to it and it should be taken up if institution has taken what about the students paid many of the students who comes from the rural places there is a lot of problem about the technology internet the electricity itself will not be available we are not in imagination to look into their internet connectivity how to transit from class teaching to the virtual world this is the most difficulty act it was there it has to my knowledge and i'm sure each one of the attendees who are there over here definitely will accept that it has taken almost for the institutions to think about to come from the classroom teaching to the e learning mode 
it has taken two months because of how to use technology, what technology, and so on. There was a stoppage in the activity because much of the institutions was not aware of the technology and they stopped it. How important to have the licensed software? They were not knowing it in many of the institutions. Still, still, these licensed software are not available. They are having all free software. They don't know how importance about the licensed software is going to play into the institutional activity. Safety about their, you know, the database that are available. We are unaware of it. How to motivate the faculty and engage students to use the technology? How to plan for academic activity? These were all the ignorance of the institutions. Thus. The lockdown has transformed the entire world from the classroom teaching to the e-teaching. This is where the adaptation is very much required. And the success was major only to those institutions which started adapting to the e-learning. And if you see it, in fact, the entire library has changed it into a mobile phone or a laptop, wherein it's a big change, but it is needed for a better tomorrow. Need to adapt. How much we are ready as a teacher, how much we are ready as an educational institution will measure the long run of it. Somebody was talking about the national education. Definitely. These are all the things are going to play a very important role. And I'm sure Professor Jellis will also agree that if we are not take, going to take up definitely the challenges or it is going to be either survive or get perished. That is the two things are going to be there. Thus, this entire lockdown has made a transition from the traditional classroom teaching to the technology. There was a need to adapt and it is going on and lot of lacunas, lot of you know, relaxations or the ignorance of the institutions or from the side of the parents or from the side of the students Definitely, it is going to measure to it how much they are going to utilize to this lockdown. Well, we are talking today about the teacher's day. We have to measure about the teacher's troubles also. There was a picture that was circulating amongst the social media of in every platform, whether Facebook, WhatsApp, one lady not having the technology to carry out the online teaching method, but still try to make it available that is where today we have to salute to all those teachers who are in spite of not being well versed with the technology try to use it and make it you know uh, deliver to the education to the uh, students needs and to come out to the expectations of the institutions the teachers were taken by surprise definitely as i said immediately the institution said i being the head of the institution i said my teacher start immediately taking because I got a communication from the council from the university that you have to conduct the online classes. This was the major fix amongst the teachers. They had experience definitely in PPT. We are all very full well versed. Now we are talking about smart classrooms. Smart classrooms means there is a limitation to it. A PowerPoint projector and a screen and a classroom to which a laptop which has been needed to a teacher or a mobile phone go and present it into a classroom. Now this online making it was another challenge to a teacher. That is where I talk, prepping up teachers, making them ready to the next generation, to prepare the, the next. They had no access to any kind of the teaching and learning resources. I talk about the softwares. That is where today we are using the Zoom. We have come across only after this lockdown period. And uh, I'm very much grateful to humble intellectuals. They are utilizing it. I'm definitely sure we are now into the techno era. This is definitely one form of a challenge was there for the teachers. The institutions had no learning management uh, systems and had to rely on the free platforms. Zoom was giving 40 minutes or the Cisco was giving for one hour. That is how we started using to those uh, free softwares. And then we started using to analyze. Still, I'm seeing many of the institutions have asked to their teachers, use the free, free platform in general. When we conduct the class in the classroom teaching, we tell to the teacher to conduct for one hour. When we ask for online, now it is just 40 minutes because the platform gives free service only for 40 minutes. That is where we are lacking behind. We, are, we must say it is the ignorance of the institution and unpreparedness of the teachers. But definitely, this lockdown has taught a lesson that how teachers should upgrade 
how institution should upgrade then only the education is going to be the best what we are talking of the education of the era of professor jelly starin and to all those seniors definitely yours was the golden era i always admire because whatever the classroom teaching whatever whatever the book book teaching was made available that was entirely you know the uh, super, uh, i can say that it it cannot be measured with the, the today's teaching technological whatever it is been available it cannot be compared also because that was always the best but today's generation is also lucky to have these technologies to utilize and i always say that to this we need to have to come out of these troubles and teachers they have been taken to the surprise there was no technology support provided by the management in the form of laptop because i don't see any institution providing definitely even my institution do not provide to the teachers they have to use their own technology these are the main some of the troubles which they had in spite after the lockdown now who are the survivors of this lockdown i must say it is not that and many of them they have got finished the survivor of the academic institutions of this pandemic is that institutions that had already online teaching technology the institutions which has already using the technology softwares that are been made paid softwares in fact it is called erp softwares that have been available they have too much of the online teaching linked with the online platforms those are the institutions which had the no problem teachers who had international and the national exposure in the use of technology in teaching and learning process definitely teachers who has worked internationally lot of exposure will be there because they have been exposed to the technology we go with the conditions of our year in village you cannot talk about the smartphone whereas in city you can talk about the iphone that is how the difference of the country whereas if you go to other countries you go to village or to a city it remains the same that is how the exposure makes a lot of difference urban students partially exposed to the technology definitely they know about instagram they know about every app that is been available in the mobile phone but when it talk when you talk about the rural student he knows only about the keypad phone we cannot think about he touching to the other heights of the technology being used and the institutions providing online skill sets and making students ready for jobs those were the survivors during this pandemic but definitely this pandemic as it is getting progress i'm sure all those institutions which do not had it and definitely they started adapting to it and they are definitely going to survive but this should be a continuous now what we have learned the lessons from this pandemic disruptions are inevitable and preparedness can prevent the following chaos that means we need to immediately adapt and prepare it to the worst sometimes it may happen now institutions will need to strengthen the technology infrastructure i was been told one of our you know apex body president that in year after the institutions may not be asked how many classrooms you are having we will definitely ask how many you know the online lectures of the teacher been followed by the students online that is where we are going to measure we are going to definitely come and check how many you know the softwares you have purchased how many you know the teachers are using the softwares and what are the blended mode of education you people are going to carry out today if a teacher do not come to the college definitely that class won't be conducted but this the lockdown has taught that even if the teacher do not come then evening time at least he should from home he should take online class to the student that means there is no escape that means there is a possibility of it blended lessons that we need to learn teachers need to become versatile and equipped definitely teachers has to adapt they cannot say that mere daur mein nahi tha i cannot adapt and he has to whether it is an old person young person or aged person technology is part of the life not only about the teaching even about the life i say students need to access the skills beyond the classroom teaching earlier attending the class noting down the notes was the concept of the education now today of the 21st century skill sets even in spite of not attending the class he will be attending virtually to the class that is where he need to adapt to the education and definitely the employers need to engage the institutions and the students with the industry needs i cannot say that just lockdown is there i cannot provide you the softwares i, pro I cannot provide the skills or the on campus activity 
the students need the institutions needs to adapt those softwares virtually they need to take up the activity where these students should be prepared well for the industry yeah now i wanted to say that how we are going to start the life after this uh, you know the pandemic the campus and the future preparedness how it has to be there the students should expect the more of the practicals in person and more lectures online that means practicals though it can be virtual by the uh, any form of the mode but still online can be a class but practical through the campus needs to be this virtual or the blended mode of education needs to be required to be done shift is of the system to maintain the social distancing and self directed learning definitely we are going to conduct the examination next week for university there is a direction earlier the distance was only 3 feet now it is 2 meters that means these are some of the things which are going to you know become the part of the life where distance maintaining but the activity cannot be stopped that is where it needs to adapt and it has to be taken among the institutions online assessments and the collaborative comprehensive evaluation or maybe one of the form of the activity needs to be must carried out student mobility may be reduced that means earlier if he doesn't come to the campus then there was a crime it is been said if you are not come to the college you are not eligible for examination no attendance today he has the flexibility wherein virtually he can attend the class and he can be part of the academic activity cost of education in lieu of technology may escalate definitely um, tomorrow the educational institution they say that okay if you take admission you are compulsory needed to take a laptop or ipad or the mobile phone that is going to be part of the educational system they may purchase the software they may put that cost on the student that okay this is the cost of the sms software this is the cost of the software online teaching which has to be shared the expenditure by the student that is going to be incurred on the campus on the institution it equally it has to be paid by the student but definitely there will be decrease in the government or the institution particularly with respect to the uh, educational expenses like scholarships may be reduced by the government because now it is not going to be regularly on campus activity it is online activity or the blended mode of activity student is at liberty i want i will go to the college if i don't want i will attend online class that is where it is going to happen and that is uh, one of the challenges going to be and now if you see it how the pooling te uh, the teaching activity is going to happen probably the uh, collaborative work is going to be more important i cannot say that as an individual institution i may carry out there is a need of large scale inter college or instructional collaboration or the international collaboration definitely benefit to the students because now it is it's a blended it is a virtual activity even the students of the other universities can attend the lectures of the indian lectures or indian teachers and the indian students can attend the lectures of the foreign students so if you are having the uh, blended mode of education where the collaborative work which we are carrying out this is definitely going to give an add on advantage to the educational system innovation is required flexibility in the academic program i cannot say that on 1st of august i will start the you know the classes and on 15th of june i am going to end up we need to have the flexibility of the program you come 15 days like this 15 days you can attend online that is where you need to make a program for online strategic education or digital mode of education and you need to have a regular activity about the staff and the uh, you know the engagement with respect to the promotion of the good practice definitely here the quality is going to be an assessment of the teachers activity plus the students participation to accept to these technologies here teachers plays a very important role where they need to be alert they need to be trained they need to be engaged so that a good practice activity can be carried out and we can have the blended mode of education means anybody who is going across to one degree can also have a chance to attend for an another degree also because he may be having a chance to attend one hour program one hour class of the other degree program two hours class of the this degree program there can be a joint degree program which is going to come but more of the national education policy to which uh, dr jalis tarin sahab can highlight to it 
wherein it is going to encourage to many of the people. Probably we are going to have this type of activity in future where campus life is there, where one uh, gate can be only for entry and the other can be only for out. And teachers will have a barrier for their lectures to protect it from the any form of the spitting or any form of you know the transmission of the virus. And the classrooms definitely cannot be a, a six uh, you know people sitting in a one bunch row bench and all all those things of the olden times may not be part of it. Maybe another four five years thereafter probably it is going to be an online education system. How the regulators are going to accept to this education or bring up definitely. There will be a disruptive in the curricular activities with more skill components that is going to be part of it. You need to be more skill oriented rather than the looking into only the degree. That is where it is going to change the educational system. And I was telling that definitely education is going to have a blended mode. I cannot say that only a classroom teaching is going to be a part of the curriculum. Now, hereafter, it is going to be blended. The student is at age. It is everything he wants at its pace. Like he want to attend the class, he will come. He doesn't want, he will go, he will attend an online class. The teacher has to make a video and he should upload to the software which has been purchased by the educational institution to which a student can attend to the classroom or online off, that is on campus. Otherwise, he can go and just access to that lecture online and he can, you know, once he watches, the software also makes it sure that, uh, that how many minutes he has watched that video of that lecture and uh, you can have a feedback from it so that means student will have a both mode of uh, you know acceptance to the teaching and the educational system will become blended more and the employment and the embedded education definitely um, more of the employers uh, the educational system uh, can change the teacher has at its liberty like okay i will conduct only online classes you pay me that much of it that is how the flexibility academic flexibility also been available like you know six months coaching online the, uh, if you are coming to on campus, then it is going to be eight months. That is how somewhere it is going to change the educational system. In practical aspects, definitely it is very difficult where to bring up uh, because online may not be the solution for the practical activities. Block teaching needs to be done wherein it makes more of the problems solved. Simulation studies, as I said, a person sitting at home, he needs to be provided with the activities of the software where if he you know, shakes the hand, then he is going to attend to an activity into the software. Okay, I say the chemistry, like, you know, if he is carrying out any test, then he has to make an activity. That is how the simulation studies are going to come up. And uh, the technology was there, as in medical fraternity, it has already come. We have heard that the surgery from one doctor from the US is doing a surgery of a patient in India. It is nothing but it is more of a simulation activity. Now it is going to be part of the educational curriculum activity also. On job training or industrial or clinical, these are going to be part of it to the medical, uh, medical activity. Uh, when it comes to efficiency, definitely innovation, uh, flexibility of the academic programs, including an online strategy, digital education, these are all going to be part of the educational system and even online evaluation. We are conducting examinations online and the evaluation. We have been given most of the apex bodies that you conduct either open book or you conduct online or you conduct offline or you conduct to Google mode, whatever may, may be the mode of it. What UGC said is that you have to do an examination by any means of the board, but definitely examination is being needed. Pharmacy Council of India said that you cannot pass a student without conducting an examination. They clearly said that you have to do an exam, use any of it, definitely online examination and online evaluation is going to be part of it. And for that, educational institutions needs to buy the software and they need to be fit enough for a longer term to run and this pandemic has taught a lesson that definitely educational educational institutions need to adapt e-learning strategies and definitely proctored exams at home exams these were all going on now it has become part of it and when we when we say that it was a surprise for the teachers as I have told how the educational institutions or the uh, the uh, institutions or the teachers have taken definitely there was even equally surprise for the students also the book has become the ebook and definitely there was more of a child challenge and for this challenge more of them has adapted to it and uh, now 
I would like to just point it out how online education for students, whether it is there was a lot of speculation that whether it is a good or a bane. I just want to highlight both the things, how it is going to be useful. Definitely, boon is for the educational institution or for the student is that if there is an academic flexibility. Student need not bother that, okay, I have to go, uh, say, from other state, he has to come and he has to attend. We had uh, the online, uh, you know, job system was there for software people sitting at home and only he has to go at weekends to the office and being at any place he is possible to have to attend to his job. Similarly, academic flexibility, online classes, blended mode of education is going to be part of it. Anytime, anywhere, learning. Student need not bother about it. He can be in his bedroom, sit it and open it, uh, the screen and just listen to the lecture of the teacher. And that is means he has got the flexibility. What compared to that of the other, where he has to come to the classroom, he has to attend, that was the challenge he had. He can pursue additional courses. As I said, there can be an additional course. I want to go for a two degree program. I will attend to it, which is saying that, okay, weekly you have to attend four online classes or six online classes of one hour. I don't mind. Recently, I have seen that there was an IIM Cozy course. They are offering the MBA program. Just I filled the application to check it out. What is this? They said that, sir, weekly two days you have to attend online. And then one day you have to attend once in a month to the on-campus activity. Then I, I can have the MBA program come from the Indian Institute of Management. That is how the advantage for me, I being an employee, I can procure many of the degree, degrees. A student while studying the undergraduate, he can think of going for some of the additional uh, courses where it can be helpful to him. That is how this is the boon for the activity. You can pursue additional courses. Learn at your own pace. As I told you, if I want, I can acquire four or five degrees in five years. If I want, I can have only one degree. At my own pace, if I'm more smart enough in the e-learning process, then sky is the limit for me to touch. And uh, uh, definitely it may not be the pace of what uh, Professor Jalis Tarin sir has said that at a young age, he got his post-graduation degree, hats off to his, uh, uh, you know, the uh, energy level to which he has pursued. Very few people are there and uh, we are blessed to have uh, such a wonderful personality today in our, uh, you know, the platform as well as in our community, in our city, and uh, we are we are very much blessed to have it. Revisit lectures at any time. He has he thinks that I have not understood the lecture. The student can just go online and open the lecture of a teacher, and he can, you know, uh, listen ten times. Whereas it was not possible in classroom. Classroom once the teacher gives the teacher, the student may have the fear. Okay, if I ask again the teacher that okay, please, again, I have not understood. Uh, can you explain once again? Definitely there will be a scolding from the student. That was one of the challenge. But now it is cool. He has at its own pace. Large diversity of faculty. As I told you, international teacher can be part of the educational institution in India. You need to just hire him per hour class you pay it, and he can be part of this Oxford University or any of the top post university can be part of the educational institutions of India. That is where the boom. But definitely there is also the other part of the way or the disadvantage the loss of the campus life. Whatever we remember, if you ask me, what is my college life? Definitely, I remember the golden days of my college days. Definitely, that college campus life will be missing for the students because he has to go online and that social activity or the friendship or the bonding with the students amongst themselves or the teachers will definitely be missing. Crowding of academic cyberspace, that is where you know, you have to every time be online. Today, uh, we are probably uh, two or three lectures for a student online. Definitely, it is one of the disadvantages. If a fellow will feel that, okay, I'm having eye headache, you know, headache in uh, my head or eye is paining or some of the other reason becomes part of it because too much of the online activity or cyberspace activity because too many apps you need to download, you need to access to it. This is one of the disadvantages academic preparedness of the staffs and students because teacher if he misses the class again evening he should take online his personal life will also get affected now after five o'clock there was no such activity for a teacher definitely after the you know sunday or saturday it doesn't make any difference we never thought that we will attend a lecture at seven o'clock now we are attending it because that means that there is a flexibility simultaneously there is also a disadvantage for a student because or for a teacher he has to 
you know get adapted to it that okay so many students have not attended i have to take class at 7 o'clock or he was on leave for some family function but academic institution says that no even if you are on leave i want you to conduct a class then that fellow while being in a function also he has to go at 7 o'clock 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock ask the students to please join i am going to take a class this is where one of the disadvantage of in technology trauma definitely as i say there will be definitely disadvantage because e everything e is not going to be good we need to have somewhere the relaxation the flexibility among the education system and research cannot be online professor jerry sering has rightly said the lab work is most important and everything cannot be when we tell about online definitely an education or a theory class can be there but practical aspect it needs to be at the campus activity and that is where and i i can show you that definitely this is one such image where the educational institutions needs to adapt they need to have the technology to adapt to it they need to have the e learning classrooms wherein a teacher sits will have the multiple classrooms i am just showing it this is already been available i couldn't find the indian classroom of this type but definitely in the coming days or in the coming year we could see that even the indian institutions are going to have the uh, e learning classrooms wherein the student sitting at its own pace in the uh, at home he can attend it and the teacher probably maybe in the educational institution if not one of his bedroom needs to be converted into the e classroom wherein teaching coaching because he is not just going to work to one educational institution he is going he may have the chance to work to multiple educational institutions to deliver his lecture then he has to develop that is where i tell prepping up of teachers teachers need to adapt the technology not at just at the educational institution even at his personal level he need to spend we talked that dental once a dental doctor completes need to establish a dental clinic by buying the chair uh, for you know the examination mm -hmm. chair and all but definitely for a teacher it is going to be another challenge where he needs to make a setup of his own classroom probably the tutorials who are taking they need to set up these are all going to be challenges we need to adapt to it and when it comes to e learning and its challenges definitely one of the major challenge that i feel that is a technology addiction to which it is happening we never thought that we are going to i am just going to highlight um, i mean sir uh, i i'll be speaking another 10 minutes i no, hope you please we... take no no problem continue yes sir yes sir okay because i have been told no restriction a... yes sir thank you thank you jazakir okay so when it comes to the major problem i think definitely we have never thought that we will be giving a mobile phone to our kids for hours together but now this is going to be definitely a challenge how much it is going to be helpful definitely i have highlighted few of the problems the technology addiction too much of socializing to which the students are going across the poor sleep habits yes this is the major issue and the lack of motivation i highlight view brief of these points and uh, the major amongst that is the social media to which i have highlighted because definitely e learning is one of the biggest need of the technology but the social media this is where we are going across we are sitting to each other but still we are unaware that who is sitting next to us this is happening i have been told one of the senior most person i was traveling in a bus sir during my time and during present time there is a lot of difference i'm speaking about before the pandemic definitely after the pandemic the situation is still more bad he just came and said when we used to travel we used to know how many people are traveling in a bus or in a bogey of a train but today we are not going even next to us who are sitting because the moment we are sitting we are just going across to our mobile phone and we are getting involved into the technology this is definitely one of the major drawback that i feel when i talk about the social media about the young generation not just about young generation this pandemic has taken to each of the every generation because i am going to give brief of data about it how the social media when i talk about social media i talk about the uh, facebook twitter youtube or all other type of it but definitely they all have their own advantages equally they have the disadvantages also it, if it is being used for the useful way proper useful way definitely it is has its own advantage but if it is not been used into a much level of the usage that definitely it becomes the disadvantage and whatever the data i am giving it is the study been done by the reputed organizations and that has shown that the wastage hours by using by the younger generation 
is 24 hours per, per week. That means almost 50 to 50, 40 to 50 hours per week. And that is where they are, you know, using it through the social media. And uh, that is all forms of technology. I'm just giving about social media, though uh, it doesn't cover into my uh, the uh, topic for the teachers, but I just wanted to take it this into the category of the e-learning. And this is becomes the part social media about the e-learning. In recent report, Google has estimated that, that India has almost 400 million active internet users. I'm talking this is only the study which has been conducted before the pandemic. And during this pandemic period, I can definitely guarantee the numbers have doubled. The numbers have doubled. This is what I can say. 350 million connected internet smartphone users. It is good. That means they are using the technology. But on an average, India adds 40 million internet users on a year to on year on year basis, which is the fastest in the world. And social networking sites and its users in India and throughout the world. If I just give the strategy or that uh, you know, the numbers of the India, this is I can say the 2019 November data. That means after 2000 March, uh, 2020 March. Just double the data. This is what I can say. That just double the data. The Facebook had India almost 313.6 million of the world, 2.45 billion of the world. India has only 313. I can now say that probably around 1 billion might be from only India. This is what I feel it so. And what's up around 400 uh, million people of the 1.5 billion people of the world. Instagram 700. Um, million people of the 800 million people of the world, Twitter 34, Snapchat, LinkedIn games, all this data, whatever it is there, it is all there up, up before the lockdown period. Just double it. I can guarantee you that the data has doubled it during this lockdown period of the users. Yes, this lockdown period has you know, locked us along with the technology. And this is majorly the disadvantage when it comes to too much of the usage, we need to think across to this technology being usage also. And majorly the problem with the younger generation as well as with the people who are been using it and the um, need of the hour, we need to check it out how best we are using to our technology. And uh, in one of my talk, I had told that there is a de-addiction clinics are coming for, you know, the uh, with respect to the uh, high tech, uh, the e-learning e being used and this is one of the uh, major problem. We have heard the doctors are having their own clinic, but there are de-addiction clinics are being opened and one such, the news of the Bangalore where we are going to have the safe food clinic where people needs to go and they uh, being counseled mm -hmm. how to come out of the technology being used. Now, I have just correlated that being using in the educational institution technology and using the uh, social media if we both club these two, definitely the e-learning and the social media makes a lot of difficult for the human being, particularly the student fraternity. And it is a different day. It is not going to be good enough. So here I say that how educational institutions, how parents are going to take up the usage of this technology is very, very important. And that is where we are going to have it. And I have few of these suggestions to all those people who are being addicted to it to how to come out of it. We can have the blockers or the limiters. That means that there are many apps as you have, you might have seen or you might have heard that China, many of the block uh, apps have been blocked by the government and they have given a few of the apps where just if you download that app, it easily identifies the China apps and it will automatically do not allow to work in your mobile. So likewise, there are many blockers or the softwares are available. You can use to those things which will limit to the usage of your, uh, you know, the uh, mobile phone. Use different browser when studying, particularly when studying or usage, because continuously if you keep on using it. The cookies. I hope if the people are who are using the cookies, because the the, the softwares are being in such made in such a way that it understands to your search. If you are searching something like biryani then you keep getting the biryanis of different different type or the videos of it if you are using it into the uh, YouTube. That is how it takes up your, uh, you know, the search engine and definitely keeps on going to it. 
So what you need to do is that you need to use the different browsers. I'm just giving an example. The cookies are being saved and it has been made in such a way that repeatedly it keeps showing to the same one. Turn off Facebook notifications, especially on cell. Why I have put a cross to it? Because this is the major being used throughout the world, not only in just as I have shown the data. There are 313 million users in India. It was in 2019. I can say now it is probably around 1 billion people might be using in India the Facebook. And for that, you can turn off the notifications so that you don't get that somebody posts that I'm going there, here and there. Those notifications get stopped. You may not get distracted to it. Set an alarm to stop it. That means if you are techie savvy and if you think that you want to, you are using it four to five hours. Nowadays, it is very easy if you just go across to your apps and it will show that how many hours you have used your app or mobile phone, three hours, four hours. Even the internet, if you go and see how many hours you have seen, you have used the internet or whether it is the mobile net internet or the Wi-Fi, it is all that data is available. You can just set an alarm, okay, I will use only two hours. Because I felt two hours is more, but during this lockdown period, two hours is nothing. Definitely, this is one of the psychological way. But you can set an alarm that, okay, I will use two hours and then I will stop this one way. It can be, it can reduce the addiction to it. New laptop at home in case. Definitely, this what I said is maybe related to an employee. But when you are having a smartphone, it doesn't apply to it. Uh, I can't say that you leave your laptop at home or leave your mobile phone at home and go. Then in that case, definitely you need to use a keypad at home and you can leave the smartphone at home and you can go. Go to library, go to place with no internet. Definitely those who are addicted to the books rather than going for e-books, go to the libraries. Read to that. That will have a bigger impact. This is I tell more of to the teachers, more of to the students to utilize to it. Definitely this will reduce the addiction of the technology. Remove distractions from home screen. Definitely, if you are having the apps, you get distracted. Too many of it, or sometimes it pop ups. There are settings into it. It pops up, and though your screen is off, your mobile is off. Sometimes it pops up, stating that okay, somebody has sent a message, or this has been uploaded video. That pops up. This is one of the distraction where you can remove it, or you can block it, or you can make it blank screen. That is how. Remove apps and automated logins. Definitely. This is where we can adapt it. Like, you know, Facebook, just open the app, it will get login, automatic login. You go to browser and use it because browser sometimes, once you use it, log it off. Because most of the times we are using too many apps and all. We may, we may have the habit of forgetting the, you know, the passwords. And that may sometimes it reduces your usage of the technology. I must say the apps, I don't say technology. I say the apps which are distracting to us from, uh, you know, our routine activity. So that can be done and read definitely rather than Facebook, a real book of the great people as uh, like uh, Professor Jelly Study and so on. Definitely it makes a lot of sense and gives an inspiration to the teachers as well as to the students. And print off assignments rather than keeping in a mobile phone, keep a printout. That makes a lot of sense a lot of you know reduction what will happen sometimes you want to see some file and you open it and you see that somebody is sending messages and rather than going to see your own file to which you want to access to it you get distracted to it and used to the mobile phone that is where you can minimize the usage to it and stop using too many of the photos you have some activity post it and forget it don't be at every minute update on your social media this is where going to be a disadvantage of the technology i'm sure um, i might have covered it to all the aspects of the teachers requirements to which they need to upgrade educational institutions to need to upgrade and the needs of uh, the technology which uh, uh, i feel that the students need to adapt and let us i hope that with this uh, uh, all the uh, forms of technology being used and uh, limiting to our, our uses to the social media definitely make us to be a good techno savvy rather than addicted savvy. I just uh, stop my screen and uh, thank to the uh, you know humble intellectuals for giving me an opportunity. I'm sure uh, I have taken a lot of time. Sorry for that. We have been given half an hour, but uh, I have taken more of the time for that. I apologize. And uh, with this, I thank and uh, 
I stop over here. Thank you. Sir. Uh, very comprehensive and uh, very informative talk on e-learning. Uh, now the general trend is that uh, the urban students are exposed to social media, Wi-Fi, and internet connections. So they can, therefore, they can easily adopt to this uh, e-learning. E uh, you also referred to that. Uh, but uh, uh, what about the rural rural students? Even they have uh, connectivity problems, Wi-Fi issues, weak signals, and all that. So don't you think this will put uh, uh, the rural students and also the uh, rural teachers also to a big disadvantage? Yeah, definitely, sir. Uh, what you have said is if we are very limited in usage of our technology, as I said, uh, we are conducting uh, this meeting at 7.30, we told. So 7.30, we all logged in. Definitely, a person might be having, he had seen, uh, Shafi uncle had initial uh, hiccups uh, for joining because of the technological errors. Though being in city, this is definitely been going to happen with the students. But in education, as I said, there are softwares which are providing to the educational institution. They need to buy, wherein the teacher at any point of time, they can upload that lecture. And the student, whenever they have got a good internet connectivity, can access to that lecture. It need not be that at 7 o'clock only the student need to come and attend that lecture. Definitely when it comes to the online examination, uh, it is a very difficult task at, at this point of time because the government itself needs to upgrade it to the internet uh, connectivity and all. But still, the government or the Apex bodies have made it that, okay, if you can't take online exams, take open book exams, wherein the student has been given a Google form, he has been submitted or given a question paper through WhatsApp and he has been asked that, okay, after one hour or two hours, you write it and answer and send that booklet through the scanned copy through the WhatsApp. This is where somewhere it is getting adjusted, but it is just beginning, sir. Definitely in future, whatever the problem you have, you know, the question you have posed, if the educational institutions, if the teacher and if the student do not adapt, do not change, this problem will remain a problem. The educational institution need to adapt. As I said, there are many softwares which costs to the institution, probably one lakh, two lakh to the institution where the teacher will get accessibility free of the software. They can at any time, whenever his network, say during daytime, uh, the network might be poor, nighttime, the network might be good enough. The teacher can upload that lecture and the student can access at any time and he can access not just one time he can have a visit to that lecture for 10 times that is how he can ease the problem yeah uh, i think that that's a good justification for that i think uh, much more has to be done for the rural students like that yeah and uh, second thing i just want to mention is uh, you also referred to that uh, in passing you know the disadvantage of uh, e-learning, uh, there is uh, no social interaction. Uh, it hampers personality development. There is no character building. Uh, there is no development of conversation skills among the students. And uh, another thing you also mentioned, this campus activity, friendship, and uh, all that is not there. So this is uh, already uh, the present generation uh, they are spending more time, uh, more time on the uh, social media and the mobiles and all that. So this will uh, add to that problem. It, it will definitely add to that problem. But what what have to say for that? Absolutely, that is where I spoke that de addiction. Uh, since I told that it is one form of addiction, as I have never given my mobile phone to my kids before the lockdown, but. After the lockdown, I have to give my phone at least for one or two hours to them. That is where, okay, they are young enough, but I have my own control. I can make a control on them. But people who are already uh, well, uh, uh, you know, aged, uh, uh, developed, it is very difficult at this time. They need to go for uh, taking care of usage. Definitely, I don't suggest that education can only be online. There has to be a blended mode. That means 
the educational activity can be 20% online and 80% on campus. Then only, I have already referred that there are needs to have a blended mode of education. I didn't say that only online education. There has to be blended mode. I say that 80% the student should come to campus and 20% he has got a liberty to attend online classes. That makes the justification to prevent him from the bail that is missing the social activity amongst the campus activity. And definitely, um, as we are delivering lectures for online teaching and all, in future, we need to give a de-addiction lectures to the students. This is going to be part of the curriculum. Maybe one syllabus will also come in the chapter that, okay, de-addiction from the e-learning process. This is definitely going to be part of it. Thank you so much. You know, uh, I think we are, uh, my feeling is that we are over obsessed with the e-learning. Um, this is this is a war reaction and war obsessed uh, because of pandemic. Now, nothing is, nothing is permanent. You know what happens? Uh, you see, we are talking of, many of the people who are talking of e-learning, I'm not talking of Salahuddin's exhaustive, wonderful talk. It was so exhaustive and informative. But I'm saying is that um, um, most people who talk of uh, e-learning, they forget that e-learning is not, uh, learning is not only in social sciences and management and, and, and the subjects of theory. See, learning, you see, the today's um, challenges are in sciences, technology artificial intelligence, biosciences, medicine, um, uh, drug, uh, drug inventions, now physics, chemistry, where uh, so much of highly interdisciplinary uh, research is going on between physicists, chemists, mathematics. For example, Wenke is a physicist. He got his Nobel Prize in biology. Now, see, in this time, you cannot learn on, you see, everything is learned in laboratory, not just learned run. You see, just as when you eat a food, people say the taste starts from the finger. You start tasting the biryani from the finger, then goes to the tongue. Exactly when you learn science, your fingers should feel. Your fingers should feel even if you hold a beaker. You cannot virtually hold a beaker. You cannot virtually, I'm a, I'm a crystal grower. So I was growing artificial crystals for which I designed reactors, high pressure reactors. I designed that. Now for that, to understand that I, I studied, uh, I went to uh, um, engineering college, NIE. Uh, I attended the classes of Professor Apramaya for one year to learn the strength of materials. I'm basically an earth scientist, but I was, I became a material scientist. So my second PhD was in second doctorate and DSC was in solid state chemistry. I did my MSc geology. Now, you can't do all these things online. Even today, you cannot do it online. You have to feel the <laughs> thing. Because if you learn everything virtual, then actually you become a useless man, according to me. For example, you say that this is a screwdriver, this is how you hold it, and this is how you tighten it. After virtually teaching it, give it to that man that engineer you produce, he will not know how to hold a spanner, how to hold a, a screwdriver. Mm -hmm. For example, to for design, I, I was running a lathe. Now I can run a lathe. I know welding, I know soldering, I know micro welding. Uh, I design, I do make uh, electrical panels. That is not taught in geology. Now, this is the process of learning by touching. So virtuality cannot take over that. And ultimately, the second point I want to make is, you see, there is always a reversal of what happens. Now the pandemic is, has driven you into classes, but still for practical learning, practical teaching to students have to go maintaining certain distances. Maybe the spacing is different. Uh, the process, it may not be in 50 girls, 50 boys, maybe 10 boys and 10 girls, but they have to learn it. And then I feel that once these things go, things uh, become normal. Some, some, if, if the corona vanishes and there is a space between 
another uh, corona to come then there will be a reversal and again the universities will go normal i am telling you take it from me it's a natural cycle because everything nothing is stable nothing is permanent this virtuality will also decrease and then there will be a discovery that there is going to be mental health problem you see virtuality is actually leading to mental health problem because the child your your child your own grandchild uh, who is just uh, one year must be holding the laptop and playing the tiktok what is the fate of his brain now these are all the concerns which are coming up and who has uh, declared uh, addiction to uh, uh, this one internet and um, a laptop and your uh, phone is a disease who has declared it it's a disease addiction so everything is going to change my feeling is this is not going nothing is going to be stable everything is dynamic everything is going to change and learning has to be through touch स्मार्टफोन for a normal maybe this uh, for a normal uh, villager a farmer that is uh, going to be a deterrent because you are t- and one thing is that scholarship may not be required for formal on campus learning but it may definitely be required for the purchase of maybe laptop and then in uh, so many surveys i have come across that whatever uh, the for example the number of engineers being churned out in india every year of them are non employable so far correct skills are concerned so when in the present environment when percent on campus learning we are producing 75% of non employable graduates and when we switch on to the e learning mode where the off campus component significantly increases so isn't it a genuine fear that the number of graduates or the percentage of graduates being churned out who are not actually employable in the real world maybe more and then already we are having a last question sir already i am telling now suppose i am sitting in a i am sitting in a metro i am it's not a metropolitan city dhanbad but definitely it's a city it's a big city but here also if a, a continuous 10 hour or maybe 8 hour to 10 hour electricity back out uh, back out is there i will run out of my batteries and all that i won't be able to charge my laptop or uh, this mobile phone then just imagine the fate in the rural area where for days together there is no electricity then how somebody will charge his uh, mobile laptop or the smartphone and one thing i have seen in the village area mostly this uh, this internet connection is being given and those internet connections are being uh, whatever the olts or the systems being used to uh, that wifi systems they are being run on the solar system solar solar photovoltaic cells and most of the places these solar cells are getting uh, stolen because they can these can also be used in the home for anything so these are some of the india specific challenges which uh, which the government has to think of which we have which we as a society has to think of if e learning if the noble objectives of e learning are to be achieved thank you sir uh, ali s sham sir you have rightly said in fact i have already pointed out these are the difficulties which definitely ha- will hamper the activity of the institution and the teacher and definitely the student uh, are india is one of the as i have told you international exposure and indian exposure any person having international exposure definitely will have more advantage because they they learn a lot of technology and all other process but when it comes to uh, you know the indian system 
we are coming out with rural and then we are coming out with city and mega city that is how it makes this pandemic has taught us that where we stand if an educational institution if a teacher and if a student is well versed with the technology and if they have adapted definitely why we call a bangalore institution is better than a institution which is in gulbarga or in raichur okay if i take the karnataka because they they provide more of the facilities they provide more of them techno savvy and they are advanced likewise rural places will always have disadvantage india may take time when educational you know we are talking about national education policy which is been now government has announced probably they have given a gap of almost 10 to 15 years to implement that means in these 10 to 15 years if an educational institution do not transform themselves into an autonomous educational institution then i am sorry they are going to be perished either you have to merge up with a strong educational institution or you have to end up your educational institution these are the only things that means you have got a timeline this pandemic has taught a lesson it does not mean that as professor jalis tarin sahab has said this pandemic is time being but this time being should be taken as one lesson probably in future we may face to which need not be an online as you are telling in engineering definitely some of the practical skills you cannot teach online i do not agree to it even professor tarin sahab has said practical skill needs to be on campus activity it cannot be online and theory class can be used as online where the online lectures can be given but definitely practical skills needs to be that is where i said if at all if in future this the online system or e learning system is been carried forward it can have a blended mode since we are now used to it it feels easy for a student that okay i feel happy with online and i feel happy with campus definitely uh, as tahsin saab said that uh, the social activity or the cultural activity that a student used to learn the bonding or the so soft skills that cultures that he is going to learn amongst the campus that he will be missing i don't say that completely offline campus has to be there or on campus has to be there there can be a blended mode of education which i say that probably if the educational institute you know the fx bodies like ugc or mhrd if they come across they may not leave the e learning process they will adapt to it now they have seen it that it is one of the form need to be adapted may they have the 80 to 20% whichever is not been fit enough they have to come across i have seen some of the teachers they are coming on their roof top of their home and conducting the classes but they are not stopping to it that means there is no end to it we cannot take a reason and say that okay abhi nahi ho raha i cannot do it they have to there are many of the students they are telling that we are not understanding the lectures online i am having a break up you know because of the network what you are telling but teachers have been advised either send through email or send through whatsapp or by any means of mode the lecture so that whenever the network is good enough they need to access probably what you are telling is of the present situation maybe in the coming days india may progress to a lot enough and we will have all accessibilities and definitely we will be fit enough our educational system will be fit enough and what you are telling that laptop and all affordability it becomes part of the government government now giving scholarship as money next they may give scholarship as laptop they may give a mobile phone that is definitely going to change the system this is what i can say